got Jessica here today. We're doing a video on sweater weather fragrances. And the way we're doing this is I went to ZGO and we've got some fragrances that I'm pretty familiar with and used to. So we're doing five fragrances that I'm familiar with and I've spoken about on the channel. And also we've selected five fragrances that, that are selling at ZGO that I'm not familiar with. And we're picking some brands that I haven't really spoken about on the channel. So 10 sweater weather fragrances that we're gonna to talk to you about today, all coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. This is Jessica. Hi. How are you? I'm well. It's good are to see you. Are you warm enough? I'm actually really warm. <laughs> I am too. I'm boiling actually. <laughs> I'm boiling. We, we are in a new studio finally. This is our first video or second video in the new studio? First. First? Is it the second? This is the second. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is the second video and we are focusing on sweater weather fragrances. What are sweater weather fragrances? A cozy sweater weather fall weather fragrances winter too anything that you just get that like cold day or blustery day mm -hmm. something that you need that that um, autumnal feeling for okay do you generally like this particular season when it's cold outside I and, do yeah. I do I do I like winter and I like fall and I like sweaters I have a lot <laughs> I have plenty of sweaters to to wear and layer and think about and accessorize with perfume Cool. When you wear a sweater, what kind of fragrance do you like to wear? Mm, usually something heavy, a nice heavy ambery, mm. uh, maybe some rose. Okay. Yeah, we have some ambers here. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we get started, uh, first fragrance we're going to talk about from the house of VDK, Gris Charnel in the Extrait de Parfum concentration. Mm -hmm. And this is a higher concentration fragrance. Right, 30%. 30%. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you think about this one? Oh, I think it's wonderful. It's deeper, spicier, more vanilla, more cardamom than the EDP. Also a little less fig though, so not as fruity. You think? I think that's what I get on my skin at okay. least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The notes breakdown for this is patchouli, vanilla, fig, iris, black tea, cardamom, cystus labdanum, vetiver, and tonka bean. So it's mm -hmm. lots of different things happening in here, but definitely a lot thicker and a lot heavier and denser. Perfect fragrance to wear in the um, autumn weather when it's uh, cold outside. I agree, I agree. My go-to is layering this one and the EDP together. Oh really? Yes. What do you get when you do that? It's perfect middle tone. Okay. So the other one's fresher, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Even though it's an EDP, it's fresher? Yes. This one to me, I agree. I do get more tea in this one. Yes. The tea is a little more amped up and that's why it's cozy and it's perfect as a sweater yeah, weather it, fragrance. It's a bit more masculine too as a, as a fragrance goes. Oh, do you in think? comparison to the, the original yeah. Gris Charnel? Yeah, even though the other one doesn't, you know, it's not, not exactly feminine, this one is, is quite a bit deeper in tone, so you, do, you don't get as much of the fruit, which I think sometimes people oh. feel is feminine. Feminine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the patchouli in here and the tonka and the vetiver kind of make it a lot more masculine than the yes. original. Yes, yes. Because they are more amped up in this particular fragrance. Right. Yeah, okay. Cool, so the first fragrance we're going to talk to you about is Gris Charnel Extrait de Parfum. Uh, a great release from the house of BDK. We've got two fragrances from the house of BDK. I'm warm, by the way. I'm boiling. <laughs> <laughs> Not cold. <laughs> Not cold. So we're moving on to a fragrance from the house of Fragrance Dubois. It's Secret Tryst. Probably my favorite offering from this mm -hmm. house as of late. Yes. Really wonderful vetiver fragrance. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's you come out. It's it, they have their secret floral blend that they kind of tuck in that they don't tell us what is in there. Oh. Um, and then it came out in February. At least launched with another one called Cavort. Cavort. They that's were right. kind of meant to be worn together and layered. Oh, really? This one was my favorite of the two. Yeah, this is my favorite of the two as well. Yes. That's why I'm featuring some of my favorites here. I don't. I didn't care for the the Cavort. Yeah. There was something about it I didn't like. This one has a more masculine touch. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like an amber with a vetiver. I agree. I get a lot of the rose in this one as well, the frankincense. A lot of those um, those um, more oriental sort Yeah, I mean, that's the word I was going to use, but I'm not using it. I, I think it's it's more ambery for yes, sure. Yes. So it's the combination of this very beautiful vetiver. And vetiver can, can get boring. Here, I feel like since they have combined it with the ambery notes, they've kind of gone into a vetiver Middle Eastern direction. I like this one quite a bit. 
quite a bit and yeah. um, this one has been a great a great success since the launch as well really mm -hmm. so you guys sell quite a bit of this one yes, in the store quite a bit yeah do you find it masculine leaning or feminine leaning or is it unisex for you I think this one is more feminine but not in a feminine more not in a strict sense interesting maybe something that women have resonated with more okay secret tryst from the house of fragrance Dubois. Yeah. are you guys a fan of that one now this next one is such an awesome launch from this house and I hear from a lot of you guys that you are enjoying it. It's Blanche Bed from the House of Liquid Imaginaire. What do you think of this one? Um, well, I smelled the tester before it came out and was very excited, waited months for it to come out. And um, it's unique. It has this interesting lactonic marshmallow woods musk sort of profile mm -hmm. blanche bed is french for unicorn oh so i did not know that yeah so it's supposed to be kind of like this like, thank you for telling me you're welcome you're <laughs> welcome and it's like a mystical fragrance so and actually, okay actually mystical is one of the notes that are in it it's it's, it's a trademarked new note interesting mm -hmm. wow learn mm -hmm. something new every day yeah. i did not know this about this particular fragrance but the notes are musk mallow there's milk there's jasmine and there's tuberose, mahonial, incense, tonka, cocoa, musk, and there's vanilla. But it's very, very creamy. It's very, very milky. It's very vanillic. Definitely the marshmallow idea yes. comes in. Um, really delicious, actually. Yeah. Very, very cozy. And it's very cozy. It's it's sweet, but it's not as um, sugary as you might think it would. What what if you read that description? It's not tooth rot rottingly sweet. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not too. No. Not sweet. There's a little bit of the, I think the incense really and the cocoa really ground it down. You think so? I think so. Yeah. I mean, if you could call it grounded. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is a, actually, do you guys do well with this one? Yes, we do. I remember when I was in one day, one of my subscribers was there and he was telling me how he loves this one. Ah. Corey? Co yes, yes. Well, Corey loves gourmands. Yeah. Hi, Corey. So, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, it's a super delicious fragrance. I think yes. this is one of the best offerings from this house. I agree. They're I pretty agree. underrated or underhyped brand. They are, and it's also a departure too, because I don't think the other ones. Well, there's there's a few that are like Desert Suave is a, has dates in it. It's on the oh, more gourmand side, I don't but know for this the one. most part, the line is not very gourmand. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Blanche Bet is the third fragrance. All right. Up next, going to the house of Goldfield and Banks. We've done a video together on the brand. Here we are again. Where did you rank this particular fragrance? Oh. Oh, uh, I ranked this at number two. Oh, I don't remember. We'll have to, uh, we we'll have to look it up. We can reference the video. <laughs> <laughs> this is Purple Suede from the house of uh, Goldfield and Banks. Mm -hmm. Originally, I was going to go with a vanilla, but I do have a vanilla option next. And I feel like this is definitely a sweater weather fragrance. We talked about it in the video. Yeah. This one is very much a winter time, which makes sense if it was launched for us in the summer. It'd be uh, winter in Australia, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so yeah, totally. totally now we're in that season and can't wait to see how people like it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's leather. It's leather lots of leather, but mm -hmm. it's also a smooth buttery leather for me for sure Yeah, the, the notes are leather wood leather lavender cardamom raspberry amber extreme the raspberry adds that yummy Sweeter kind of fruitiness to this mix and then also the lavender. It's a really really prominent lavender note I think so. And yeah, it's really nice contrast to the suede leather just this aromatic bright uh, floral um, you know herbal kind of a touch there. It's it's very different than what you expect it to smell like. Oh really? I think mm -hmm. I think for a lot of people it, it's not a fragrance that maybe most people have smelled before and then it's just a matter of like does it resonate but you can't say that it's like you know been done. Mm. Like, Okay, yeah. Purple suede is delicious. It's a great leather. It's definitely on the aromatic side. The lavender really does shine through. The raspberry does as well. Uh, so it's purple suede from the house of uh, Goldfield and Banks. And then the last fragrance, until we get to the fragrances that I'm not too familiar with, is Unvani from the house of Obvious Parfums. Mm -hmm. Do you know, you know this brand, right? You I guys do. sell this fra yeah. these fragrances. We do. What do you think about the line? Um, I think that they're very it's very modern I love what they're doing with this more transparent fragrance um, also um just everything about the bottle is reusable. The ink is actually biodegradable. Oh. This is pressed cork. Okay. And the bottle is actually completely recyclable and reusable. So. Oh, it's decantable. Mm -hmm. I did not even yeah, know this. Yeah, so there's a lot to it. When, and so 
So that's what the line is going for is luxurious sustainability and mm. um, so that's part of the, the brand that d people don't really talk about. Yeah, Unvani is really delicious vanilla with tonka beans. There's also musky notes thrown in there as well and it's definitely a great sweater mm. weather fragrance. It's a little more closer and a lot of people think these are more simple. Well, they are simplistic fragrances. They're not one note fragrances. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of right. other things happening with them but basically each fragrance focuses on a specific note. In this case I'm highlighting the Unvani, but I think you can layer with a lot of the other fragrances. Like for example, you can take Unvani and Un Fleur d'Orangere, layer these two together, and what do you get? You get something similar to Love Don't Be Shy by Killian. Ooh. Or you can actually take the um, poivre and then marry it with the vanilla. You get a spicy vanilla, which is really delicious because I don't think this uh, vanille by itself is very spicy. No. Or you can do the patchouli because there's a very, really delicious combination of patchouli and vanilla together. You get the earthy woodiness, the sparkliness from the patchouli with the yummy gourmand touches of the vanilla. So I feel like this is a great line and these two would make great sweater weather fragrances. If you want the floral sea of the citrus but from the Fleur d'Oranger, the spiciness from the poivre, the woodiness from the patchouli. Yeah, those totally. are great suggestions. Yeah, what no. do you think? It's not an obvious suggestion. Oh, oh. it's not? <laughs> <laughs> we can cut that. I just had to... No, it's fine. It's good. All right, moving on to the collection of fragrances that are very new to me. I haven't spoken a lot about these brands and, and on the, this channel, and I'm going to dig into them very soon. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do two fragrances from Clive Christian. Who's a fan of Clive Christian? Do let us know. Put a comment down below. The first one is Clive Christian's Jump Up and Kiss Me Hedonistic. Long names. Mm -hmm. This to me is a tobacco amber fragrance. There's actually a kind of a bubble gumminess in here along with some soapiness as well, right. which is very, very unique. But I feel like this is a really, really long lasting fragrance and it's perfect to, you know, put it on and, you know, walk around in the cold and oh, keep yeah. smelling yourself. Yeah, I think so. It definitely, you know, I get a lot of it. I think that what you mentioned of the, the bubbliness and the the bubble gum and the, and the soapiness, so, soapiness would be like a cherry and orris sort of combo. Oh, okay. I think that, that those aspects come out. Um, I don't get too much of the green tea maybe a little bit of the sparkliness of the mandarin um, but this is this is a long lasting a very, very very strong very very rich intense fragrance. Yeah. And also, it's also kind of unique you don't get too much of one particular note I feel like both of the Clive Christian fragrances we're going to talk to you about are very very complex and when you're wearing them you can really really experience the complexity because there's layers and layers and layers of notes and that's why I feel like it's like very, very deep, like it's deep. You can cut through all the different notes and you can touch the tobacco, experience the amber, you know, smell the vanilla and then feel the leather and things like that. Over the hours, you get the different aspects for sure. It's mm. one of those fragrances that has a long evolution. Okay. Do you get that at all? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So this, I'm not, I haven't spoken a lot about Clive Christian on the channel. I'd like to find out if you guys are fans of the brand. Let me know, put a comment down and if you want me to dig into the brand further I'd like to find out but moving on to the next fragrance another Clive Christian that is um, after smelling it in ZGO I felt like it would be a great mm -hmm. sweater weather fragrance this is blonde amber mm -hmm. we're yeah. talking about a lot of ambery fragrances and you mentioned amber is a great fragrance it style is. yeah for, for sweater weather and this one is another one that's tobacco with tuberose and then also ambery touches and then of course there's some dried fruitiness as well. Mm -hmm. But what do you get with this one? Ooh, this one gives me a mood. It's like, I don't know what it is. It reminds me of some place that I've been and it was a very expensive place. Ooh. I just can't remember where it is. <laughs> <laughs> is it like very luxurious? Yes, yeah. it has that. It has this... Um, uh, I love it on. This is one of my favorites from this house, actually. Oh, okay. Um, I, I guess I picked the right fragrance. You did, yeah. yeah good well, taste. I actually smelled everything there, and I thought this would be perfect as a sweater weather because. It's a tobacco, but there's something feminine about it because yes. it has a lot of tuberose. It's it's on the lighter side. I think blonde amber is a good description for it. Mm. Um, okay. But, you know, is this something that I feel... I haven't played around with this too, too much with clients yet, but I kind of feel like men are going to gravitate toward this one maybe a little bit more. Really? I don't know why. 
today. Okay. Even with the prominent note of tuberose, because I get tuberose here quite a bit. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I get I get a lot of those dried fruits and tobacco. The rum, the rum. I get a lot of rum. Okay. So mm -hmm. yeah, it does. It does mm -hmm. have a boozy edge to it. It does have a boozy edge. For me, since I'm so sensitive to the tuberose, it kind of like kills everything oh, else. Oh, yeah, it's what really yeah. comes out for you. Sometimes when you're like really sensitive to a specific note, you tend to just smell that. Oh yeah. And then it kills the other smells. But, oh, okay. Well. But, but for me, I do get the tobacco, yes. but it's on the floral side, not not right. like a dirty, ashy tobacco. No, no, it's definitely a, a cleaner tobacco. Again, so something a little bit more elevated. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, maybe yeah, perhaps a dressier tobacco. Okay. So I could see this going to like a like a play just before Christmas in the city and oh, you're all dressed up. That's a perfect description. <laughs> okay. Yes. Blonde Amber from Clive Christian. Let me know if you guys have sampled those two fragrances again. Let me know also if you want me to dig into this house further uh, on the channel. I don't speak about them much, but I felt like when I was uh, checking these fragrances out at ZGO, they really d did stand out as great smells and uh, ones to highlight for you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a sweater weather fragrances. I have my favorites from the house. Oh, you do? I do. Cool. Maybe we'll do a video together. Maybe we'll, we could. All right. Moving on to the house of the house of Oud or it's T-H-O-O. -O. Mm -hmm. What do they go by now? Uh, the house of Oud or the house I or T-H-O-O? -O? I see it as often as both. As both. Depends. T-H-O-O -O probably more often. Okay. But... There's no wood in this particular fragrance. We're talking about Golden Powder. Another brand I don't speak too much about, the House of Oud. Shall we dig into this house as well? But when I was going through the fragrances of this brand, I felt like this is so, so delicious. It is. It's vanilla once again, and it features ambery notes, of course. It features tonka beans or coumarin mm -hmm. in this case, and lots of spices, nutmeg, cinnamon, and there's a bit of a tobacco blossom in here and some musk and guyac wood. Wow, this is so delicious. It is. What do you think about this? Oh, this one, I, well, the bottle also kind of gives me that feeling even before I spray it on this golden crackle finish on mm -hmm. the front. It just, it kind of, sets this idea already it's going to be a warm inviting fragrance and this is kind of matches your sweater i know it's hey. getting it right it's perfect <laughs> i should have to maybe take this home today yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> no, i'll leave it with you i okay. have i have my own oh okay cool. um so but i like it um especially since we don't get you know snow in san francisco when no. it starts to get those cold rainy days I like to spray this one on. It definitely has that enveloping warm cashmere, mm. that tan warm cashmere sweater okay. feel. <laughs> um, and what do I get from it? I get a lot of the sandalwood and cinnamon. Okay. I do. Now, my my one thing about this fragrance is I always want it to be more intense than it is because it's such a full-bodied fragrance, but it's is not it close a, to the skin. It is. It, I think it has a good projection, but I still just want it to be a stronger fragrance. Okay. And it still has. It has a long wear, but it just. It's such a. It's such a mm, full fragrance. It's so yummy. Somehow I imagine it being like one spray and the room fills up. Okay. Okay. And I don't get that from that. So that's that's my one thing about this fragrance. Mm, okay. Yeah. For me. I think the name is really appropriate for it. It's definitely on the powdery side. It's not a syrupy fragrance for me. It's right. got the powderiness and golden powder. It's that's exactly what they're right. what you're spraying. It's golden powder. It is a little brownish, maybe powder, yes. but <laughs> so this makes it into my exception of powdery fragrances. Okay. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Golden powder from the house of T H O O. <laughs> okay, guys. This next one is so so interesting. I've been wearing this one and I'm obsessed with it. I I am so so obsessed with it. And the thing is, I have never featured this brand's fragrances in any of my videos. Maybe I've done one here somewhere, but I actually had visited their boutique in Rome several years ago, shot a video. I've got that on the channel. I'm speaking about Royal Crown. It's Nocturna. Wow. This is so unique to me. This is like a really funky, and that's not the right word to use. Like it's vanilla, but it's not like vanilla. Like I'm getting ambergris, but I'm also getting a bit of like Baccarat Rouge kind of ambroxan mm. under there. Mm. And there's vanilla, but it's thinned down with like peony, there's melon, there's magnolia, there's peach and lychee. Mm. So the vanilla is not its thick syrupiness. No, no, no. But that ambergris, and they say ambergris, I'm getting more like ambroxan here. It does kind of have like, like, like there's like a Baccarat Rouge thing really, really under there, like trying to squeeze out. Yes. 
And I'm, I'm digging the muskiness of this one. Oh yeah, I get this one straight out of the box. I sprayed it on my skin without even testing it on the strip first, and I've loved it. Like I, I know that there's the peach and the lychee, and the the melon as the as the fruits, but I get more of like a nighttime sort of fruit. It's a interesting. Dark, it's a dark fruit. Okay. It's not something I would wear during the day. I, I like the name of it, and again, it matches the fragrance but the bottle itself is just also quite striking it is very beautiful and i love their you know little caps with mm -hmm. the with the crowns uh, the king's crowns and things like that it's super long wearing uh, yeah this is actually long lasting it doesn't smell like it's going to be but it has this lingering power and i feel like it's the ambergris or ambroxan that's in here because there's definitely like a marine touch in here there is yeah but it's not like the one that kind of makes you sick, like I, I'm, I'm kind of not into the marine things. Yeah. This one's got a great smell. It is really, it's a sexy fragrance. It is definitely, yeah, you're yeah. right, Would sexy. Would you say that? I think so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Nocturna from the House of Royal Crown. Uh, I think you guys are gonna like that. Get yourself a sample or go to ZGO and smell it. Mm -hmm. And the last fragrance we're gonna talk about, the latest from BDK, is Ombre Safrano, this one right here. And the name is totally making sense. It's Amber, Safrano, standing for sa Saffron, I'm mm -hmm. assuming, right? Mm -hmm. So Saffron, and it features Saffron Accord, Plum Accord, Olibanum, Black Leather Accord, Rose Absolute, Oakwood, Vanilla Bean, and Black Pepper. Wonderful. And she, as she was mentioning, I feel like it's True ambers are perfect for right. sweater weather fragrances when you want, you know, to stay warm, it's cold outside, and lingering power is basically what you want with the, the fragrances, and this is the kind of fragrance it is. Yes, yes. You don't want a fragrance that's going to disappear in the cold weather. Just kind of, you know, get stay close and not have a projection. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. I like the projection personally. Oh, yeah, that's what, yeah, exactly. You <laughs> want a projection. Yeah. But this one to me felt like spicy, love, the spicy mm -hmm. amber and very leathery. Uh, amber and I think I'm getting the the leathery touches from the uh, even though they mentioned there's black leather here mm -hmm. I'm getting leathery touches from the saffron as well oh yeah saffron creates that leatheriness to begin with mm -hmm. so I think that uh, but it's also a little bit more of like that golden mm -hmm. sort of leather as opposed to like you know a cured leather yeah yeah, yeah totally and it's a softer leather it's not it's a softer but it's also maybe more of a spice sort of leather as yeah yeah, yeah. there's to, definitely spicing yeah, this here. texture yeah like okay. suede has a kind of a texture scent to it mm -hmm. um i don't know if other people experience it like that but i do think you you know they've done a good job at replicating those textures in, okay uh, in in the sense yeah i get that yeah but there's definitely the presence of plums in here as well mm -hmm. and you can totally pick it up most likely as it's kind of like, not when you initially spray it, but towards the heart of the fragrance, the plum kind of appears. But uh, perfect sweater weather fragrance, I think. And uh, this one is created by Julianne Raskiné of uh, IFF, uh, one of my favorite perfumers. Great perfumer. Yeah. Some really, really great perfumers yeah. from that. Um, and also, I think anybody who likes BDK and likes Ambers is going to have a fun time with this fragrance. Yeah. I don't think it's going to disappoint. No. And this one, again, as far as Ambers go, it doesn't smell like other Ambers, I have to be honest. It smells like a very new Amber mm -hmm. and more going into the fruity leather direction. So that's all we have for you today. Ten sweater weather fragrances. Five fragrances I've spoken about. Five brand new fragrances. Let me know if you want me to dig into these houses, uh, especially Clive Christian, as I said. And then of course, uh, the one that I'm really obsessed with is Nocturna from the House of Royal Crown. And then uh, we also spoke about the Golden Powder from uh, the House of Oud. If you want me to speak about those fragrances, let me know, put a comment down, and also let us know what your favorite sweater weather fragrances are, and if you are fans of these particular fragrances. Other than that, guys, uh, thanks so much for watching today. There is a discount code in the info box for ZGO Perfumer. You can take advantage of it for any of these fragrances or any other fragrances in their store. Uh, Jessica, thanks so much for coming back. It's nice to be here again. Come back another time. All right, sounds great. All right, guys, thank you. Thank you for watching today. Please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one, goodbye. Bye.